waiting for the Mountain House to cook. The Mountain House is freeze freeze dried dog chip meals. <laughs> they're actually not dog chip. They're a little bit better. Not much, eh, guy? Okay. Let me take this minute to uh, fill you guys in about this freeze dried shit right here. I didn't really read it. I didn't take my time to read. I bought I bought a bunch of these meals for. Uh, the hell was it? Sixteen dollars. <laughs> And it's, what's it called? Some kind of plant-based shit. This is called Irish Shepherd's Pie. And it's plant-based, they type for the, the label. And of course they make the foil wrap look like brown paper to be more appealing in a way to your brain because it's about the environment, right? Well, caught you on that one. But anyway, what I'm getting at is this meal is half of what one of these typical freeze dried meals is. Half in calories, half in portions, and all the price. And it's dog shit. When I opened up this thing up and had a look at it to put the water in, I just about puked. So, uh, whoever, you guys that are making this, um, I'd like to grease it up and put it somewhere for you. To put it the polite way. Oh, there's two, three loons coming right there. Four. Oh, those are red-headed mergansers. Those are fish and ducks. Huh. All right, so by the time I finish reading this one, the the uh, the meal should be ready to eat. And then I'll see if I can blast off a bunch more of the lake. I'll show you everybody what the lake view is. The sun going out is pretty incredible. Now, listen to this one. Listen to this one. Hello, Steve. I've been watching your channel for some time and commend you for your no-nonsense approach to this topic. My experience happened in 2015 in the Pike State Forest, in the Pike State Forest in Pike County, Ohio. I was there bow hunting, which I've done my whole life. After scouting areas around the state forest for my truck, I located a bachelor group of bucks in a privately owned cut cornfield on the edge of a state forest property. I asked the landowner for permission to hunt the cornfield and he declined. So I drove down the road about a quarter mile and asked another landowner for permission to park on his property for easier access to the public area I wanted to hunt. The property owner, whose name I will not mention, was an older gentleman, I guess he would be in his early 70s, and he allowed me to park by his barn and access the public ground. It was in the middle of the day, so I walked in on the public side of the steep hillside overlooking the cornfield where I'd seen the bucks and found a shelf about a middle of the steep hillside, a bench, that the deer were walking to get to the cornfield. I hung a hang-on tree stand and went back to the cabin I was staying in. The next morning I got up around 4 a.m. and made my way up the mountain and along the bench to my stand. And I climbed up, situated my gear, and settled in about an hour after daylight. I saw a movement off my left shoulder in a group of pine trees and focused my attention to that area. Again I noticed movement from behind an ash tree surrounded by the small pines. I got my binos out and scanned the small area that was only 50 yards from me at the most. I did not see anything, so I scanned up and down the trunk of the ash tree about six and a half feet up the trunk. I saw a hand, large, covered in hair, and through the binos I could tell it was not human, too large, too hairy, and too dark. The fingernails were coal black and my heart was in my chest. I lowered the binos and raised them again. This time, half of the face was peering from around the trunk and just over the top of the hand. I about had a heart attack. His face was dark and leathery and his eyes were small and beady in proportion to the size of its head. His nose was flat and wide and it was staring right at me. I froze in fear and disbelief and just let go of my binos. All I had was my compound bow and no shot of any kind. After what felt like an eternity but was more like 30 seconds, it backed away with its face behind the tree and all I could see was its arms at one point as it backed down into a deep drainage ditch and disappeared. I did not know what to do. I sat there for over an hour and heard nothing. This thing made no sound whatsoever. It was like it disappeared into thin air. I finally mustered up the courage, climbed down, and at a very brisk walk crossed across the fence. And at a very brisk walk crossed the fence and went across the cut cornfield to the road and walked it out to my truck. When I got to the property where my truck was parked, two gentlemen who owned it was sitting on his porch. I had to walk, I had to walk right by his house and down the gravel alone to my truck. 
I was still a nervous wreck, and as I approached the front of the house, he said, Well, do any good? It was all I could do to answer him. I said, No, I did not. He saw that I was shaken, I guess, and asked me if something was wrong. I said, If I told you what... If I told you, you would think I was crazy. He asked, Did something happen? I then told him what I saw. He got quiet and said, Yeah, they're around. I've seen them. He asked where I was at, and after I explained, he said there was a spring there and that he had seen one in that area himself. I could not wrap my head around all this at the time, and he told me he did not think they meant harm to anyone. He made sure to mention again that he did not think they were harmful and that I should not bring unwanted attention to the fact that they were there. He said himself and others had encounters and that they did not want the negative attention it would bring to the area. I just kind of nodded and got in my truck and left. I went back to the cabin and at some point fear turned to anger. I was mad at the gentleman as well the experience, but mainly at the fact that I was so terrified. I was on a five day hunt, it was the first day, and here I am scared of, of the woods that I've been in my whole life like a child scared of the dark. By the evening of the third day I'd had enough. I gathered my gear, went back to the tree stand. It was very unnerving sitting there and waiting the whole time I was on pins and needles and dreading sunset. I had a doe and a yearling come by around 6 p.m. and I was watching them, which helped op op occupy my mind. Around 6.30, a good buck came to the same, the same way the doe and the yearling had come. I drew my bow and stopped him at roughly 20 yards and put an arrow through his ribs. The buck took a leap and I watched him fall in the drainage ditch where that damn thing disappeared. It was very strange walking to the buck, which was a good nine point, and rather than be excited to be successful, I was in a huge hurry to get out of there. I got him to a place where I could retrieve him with my truck faster than I could have ever thought possible. I make myself go back there when I'm in the area and I've been back to that location on five occasions and I've not seen anything unusual again, but the experience will haunt me the rest of my life. And I do not bow hunt without a large cal caliber sidearm anymore. Thank you, for what you, thank you for what you are doing and giving people who have encountered these things a platform just knowing that others have had experience of these things and that you're not the only one affected means a lot. Thank you for your time. Yeah. And there's another one. That was awesome. That was kind of different, eh? Yeah. Nothing I'd crave. Look at those ducks hanging out right behind you. They're probably hitting those fish that we were watching where we were swimming. I have to go in the tent and get them hammered by boats over here. Yeah, yeah. But anyway, so there's another one. It's time to eat dinner. And then I'm gonna flip the camera around and uh, show the view and blast off some more of these emails after we eat some food here. Bush plane's coming tomorrow.